Is this the face of the future at super middleweight? Or is this old warrior programmed to destroy? It looks a thriller, and it's no virtual reality. We're online on Saturday Fight Night to sort out our super middleweight supremacy as Brian McGee and Robin Reed vie for control. The winner will be the new force with dreams of more fantasy matchups, but this fight night at the King's Hall Belfast has echoes of the past too, of all the classics, all the scenes of extraordinary excitement witnessed here over the years in one of the best places to watch boxing. So take your seat, because tonight we find out if Ryan McGee really does fit the bill as our next big super middleweight star. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Also to find out if he can live with the excitement generated, just as Barry McGuigan did it in his heyday here at the King's Hall, and also whether he can emulate Steve Collins, who was, of course, a world leader for Ireland at super middleweight. Either way, McGee faces a knight and an opponent that should provide all the answers. Adam Smith sets the scene. In this year's most eagerly awaited domestic dust-up, Ireland's unbeaten super middleweight hope Brian McGee tackles the steely Manchester-based stalwart Robin Reed. I feel super. I'm confident everything I've done, up to the fight lead, up to the fight to build up everything. So uh, all I've got to do is get in there and hopefully they'll come through on tonight. Trained hard for this fight and taking it very, very serious. Um, Brian, Brian McGee's in for the hell of a night on Saturday night. A brilliant amateur, McGee's blown away many of his professional opponents, notching up seven IBO title defences. But he's also looked lacklustre and flaws have been exposed. The Irish enigma knows he must deliver in his first major test. I know how good he is, you know, he's a, he's a, he's a champion, so he is, but, you know, Robin Reed was at my stage at one time, so hopefully this is my time where I can step up and be a champion too. Reed's had an excellent 11-year career, winning the world title in Italy and turning back top challengers. But close defeats against Joe Calzaghi and Sven Otka mean he badly needs a comeback win. I've had some dodgy decisions in the past. The Otka fight was a dodgy decision and as I keep saying and I keep stressing it, someone's got to pay for that for that, um, that bad decision back in December. Otka's retired so it's not going to be him, so it's got to be Brian McGee. It's a genuine 50-50 fight, pitting the southpaw skills of McGee with the orthodox strength of Reed. At 29, McGee's unbeaten. How much has Reed got left at 33? But will the Englishman's experience find a way through the Irishman's defence? Tonight, Brian McGee could come of age, or we may see a Robin Reed revival. It's going to be a great fight, but there's only going to be one winner, and that one winner is going to be me. And that IBO world title is going to be exchanging hands once more, and that's uh, over to Robin Reed's hands. And You're absolutely it. convinced? Absolutely convinced, absolutely certain. There's no way I'm going on without that belt in my hands. Prediction for everybody. Brian McGee, champion still, signing it. Yes, but... He was there, Robin Reed, in the era of Eubank Ben and, of course, Steve Collins. Steve, does it have echoes of those wonderful nights of the 90s? Absolutely. This is the best super middleweight title fight in the world today. As far as I'm concerned, Robin Reed is the young crowned IBF and WBA middleweight champ super middleweight champion of the world. And I must say that Brian McGee is not taking the easy option. This is the best fighter out there for him to fight. Barry, it's certainly the biggest fight in Belfast in yeah. recent times. That's why it's packed. And it's all new to, McGui to yeah. McGee, does yeah. he? have the sort of character to handle the expectation and it's been building in this town all day long. Of course it has and that's the big question. This is a real asset test, this is a pressure situation. And the boxing fans in Belfast are discerning boxing fans. They love a real match, this is a live match, this is a real 50-50 pick em show and that's why they're here in the droves. They appreciate but it's a huge advantage to McGee if this is a tough fight. Can he handle it all Steve, the expectation as well as the job he faces in the ring? Well, I've looked at McGee in the dressing room, I heard him interview, he is up for it. And I think this is his big opportunity, his chance to prove himself. At times, Barry, has he blown a little bit hot and cold for you? Yeah, he's not the complete article, that's why this is such a tough fight. He's not the finished article. He's not good up close, he looked vulnerable in his last fight against Jerry Elliott. 
He was dropped, he was hurt, and this is a real risky fight. But before that, Barry, on his first major appearance here at the King's Hall, November last, against Hassin Sharifi. Yeah. Steve, how did you feel he dealt with a fight? And it was a big job at the time against a name and a man with plenty of accomplishment in world class. Well, maybe he rose to the occasion. This was his toughest fight before, um, before Robin Reed, and he rose to the occasion. Maybe he'll do the same again tonight, and maybe he'll prove he is the legitimate champion of the world. Barry, what about the southpaw skills that McGee demonstrated in this win? Yes, undoubtedly he was good against this guy, and this is why, although he didn't look impressive against Jerry Elliott, um, Robin Reed will suit him, because Robin Reed does not like to initiate attacks, he does not like to come forward, he says he's going to come forward, he says his right hand is going to finish McGee, and there's every chance that that could happen. But if he stands off McGee, he's making a big mistake, and Brian stands a great chance, and it's very important for Brian to keep this fight in the centre of the ring, and start off, and slowly edge forward, scoring the points. That was a win to put the word out that McGee had risen in class. But now for a man who has truly been top class, let's not forget Robin Reed, a former WBC world champion, and he won it in Italy against Vincenzo Nardiello on a glory night. So did he prove something there, Barry, that fighting away is not a problem? Precisely, against Van Otka too, Stevie thought he won the Otka fight. I didn't think he won it, I thought he just lost it. But on this occasion, he had to fight away from home against a very hostile crowd. It had no ill effect on him whatsoever. And did it also underline as he fights a southpaw tonight, Nardiello as southpaw was no problem for Reid. I, I, Reid has seen it all before. There's, there's nothing new for Reid here, Reid here tonight. There's no style he hasn't faced before. There's no venue he hasn't gone to that where he hadn't got 99% of the people cheering against him. Robin Reid's an old warrior. He's been around. He's seen it all. It's an interesting point, Steve. You know, he got the wonderful result against Nardiello, but since those days, defeats however narrow to Joe Calzaghi, Sugar Boy Malinga and Sven Otka and you just wonder, you, you mentioned the age, 33, does that all take away a little bit now from Robin Reed? I think there's too much emphasis put in the way, Robin Reed is, is 33, he's a young 33. Just to point out that Dave McCauley, former World Flyweight Champion, is the supervisor here in Belfast tonight. It's only fitting on his home patch, Barry. What about Reed? Well, I think Reed, if it comes down to a slugging match, Reed's got a better chin. He's proved against tremendous punches like Kalzaki, etc. He's got a better chin. If it comes down to a slugging match, he'll come out on top. If McGee can keep it in the centre of the ring and outbox him and beat him to the punch, it favours, Reed. It favours McGee. Let's get down to Adam Smith. He has Sam Story with him, another distinguished super middleweight in these parts. There is a real sense of electricity here in ringside. Has been all week. Belfast expects. Adam, the, the atmosphere here in the King's Hall, it's, it's renowned the world over. And you don't really appreciate it until you're right sitting right in the middle of it on a night like this. It, the, the crowd, you can feel the, atmos the atmosphere building up. And all week, people have stopped me in the street about the big fight Saturday night. It's fantastic to see. Is it all about Brian McGee making a serious statement here in front of the fans? The pressure is on Brian McGee. Um, it's a great opportunity for Brian to stamp his authority in the whole super middleweight division. And at the same time, we've got Robbie Reed trying to prove to the, the boxing world that he's still the man. A cracking battle awaits Paul. The King's Hall is packed out. Everyone's been waiting for this. We go straight to our top of the bill. It's Ian Dark and Jim Watt for commentary. Our master of ceremonies is John MacDonald. Belfast, are you ready? Here we go. Now, welcome to the ring. The challenger from Rockport, England. It's the Grim Reaper. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, my memory goes back to so many famous Belfast fight nights. Ray Close, Chris Eubank, Dave Boy McCauley, Fidel Bassa, Barry McGuigan against Juan Laporte. Are we in for another one of those nights in this famous arena here? Here is Robin Reed, graduated with distinction from Boxing School of Hard Knocks, Olympic bronze, 92. WBC super middleweight champion along with three successful defenses of that title and look how up he is for this fight here tonight they say he's in the best condition he's been in since he fought Henry Wharton in a title defense in 1997 chip that oh, wouldn't surprise me at 33 one of too many chances left this man is genuinely one of the class he's a much more complete fighter than Brian McGee and you have to say his best form would 
be too much for Brian McGee, but it's a long time since he's, since he's shown his best form. Sometimes he's a little bit more cagey, but maybe all-out aggression would serve the purpose more. So it just depends, can he summon up from deep inside himself once again here? He's, as I say, he's a better fighter technically than Brian McGee, but it's all about timing, and as this comes just a little bit late, and it's the time right for Brian McGee. Yep, does the desire still burn at 33 years of age? Looking at him, I think you've got the answer. Brian McGee is getting ready to enter the ring for what could be the biggest boxing night of his life so far. And now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome home to Belfast, the champion! It's Brian Hawkins! Looks like a scene from The Matrix, the famous film, doesn't it? And if they gave victories for re-entrances, McGee might have won this already. Unfortunately for him, they don't. It's a big, big test, this one. Has he got the medal? Is he good enough? The camp are extremely confident, I can tell you. Well, he has uh, produced a couple of flat performances recently. He has to get those out of his mind because at his best, he's an excellent boxer who uses the South Boss fans to good effect. But tonight is all about tactics. Sometimes in a fight, you can go in and just go wherever the fight takes you. Other fights, you need to think what you're doing right from the off. And this is one of these fights for Brian McGee. It's all about tactics. Keeping this at long range, he likes the counter punch, but so does Robin Reed. He must be prepared to take the initiative, steal some of the early rounds, because this fight is going to end up a real tough night's work for him. Packed to the rafters, literally. Well, is his future so bright that he has to wear shades? You're about to find out. 29. 22 unbeaten fights behind him. If he's not ready now, he never will be. They have to find out, and now they're going to. Here comes the tail of the tape for this big Belfast fight night. The biggest they've had, I'd say, in this city for a decade. Reed is 33 now, but a fresh 33. McGee ought to be at his peak at 29. He's taller, the man from Belfast. will have a slight reach advantage. They both made the 12 stone weight limit at the weigh-in yesterday. McGee a pro for only four years. Reed for 11 years now. He's had 41 fights in that time. And he's got the T-shirt, as they say. He's had 102 more rounds. Power, maybe the advantage there is with Reed. And this is what the bookmakers think. They can't separate them. Both 11 to 10 on with the draw. Only 14 to 1. And that was a suggested bet, I noticed, in the racing post this morning. Well, how many matches do you get where the bookies cannot pick a winner? This shows the quality of this match. A first class of one championship match. Here's John McDonald, your MC. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to the legendary Kings Hall, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Best standing room only. Barry Hearn for Ringside Boxing Promotions, in association with Prince Promotions and Matchroom Sport, proudly presents for your entertainment 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Sponsored here by 888.com, the world's number one online casino and poker room. And a very warm welcome to our viewers joining us live and exclusive here on Sky Sports. You've joined us for the very best ringside seat in the business. All the officials have been appointed by the IBO president, Ed Levine of Coral Gables, Florida, USA. All in association with the British Boxing Board of Control. Our supervisor at ringside is Mr. Charlie Giles of Birmingham, England. 
Timekeeper appointed by the British Boxing Hall of Control is Dow Elliott of Belfast. Our three scoring judges at ringside from All Hallows in Kent, England, Mr. Richie Davis. From France, Robin Dupier. And from Derby, England, Mr. Paul Thomas. Referee in charge of the action. From sunny Florida, USA, it's Tommy Kimmons. Ladies and gentlemen, they are the officials. Here are the contestants. Firstly, and introducing to you, the challenger. He's fighting under the red corner, wearing the white trunks, trimmed with black, weighing in at 11 stone, 12 pounds, 12 ounces, bringing a staggering 41 fight record, 36 wins, 27 inside the scheduled distance, four losses and one draw. He comes to the ring as the former WBC Super Milloyd Champion of the World. It's Reed Bowman, Robin Reed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Belfast number one son fighting out of the blue corner. It's the champion. He's wearing a strong trunks trimmed with black. He weighed in at 11 stone, 13 pounds, 12 ounces. He is undefeated. 22 contests, 22 wins, 16 inside the scheduled distance. He makes his eighth defense. He is the reigning and defending IBO Super Middleweight Champion of the World. Let's get the action underway. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the world. Fanatical support here for Brian McGee, just as you'd expect, but Reed won't mind Gentlemen, boxing this away. 12 round fight for the IBO Super Middleweight Championship of the world. And I gave you the instructions. I want to remind you this audience is here to watch you fight. So keep it clean. Touch them up. Well, Robin Reed was so intense during the build-up there, the preliminaries. He's got You Are History, uh, you're watching history in the making, written on the back of his trunks here tonight. He means business. McGee can be a bit of a slow start. Remember, he was down against the Nigerian Jerry Elliott early in his last fight. With his chin past the test of Reed's right hand. McGee has to box, you feel here, use his skills, plenty of those he has. Has to produce the kind of punch-perfect display he came up with against former WBC champion Haseen Sharifi in one of his more recent fights. But these two are both a bit enigmatic, Jim. Well, Reed has made the first move a couple of times already and he's been caught with a southpaw jab. A wild swinging right there. Uh, the one that he landed so often against Joko Zaghi, I would imagine his tactics, if he can still summon up the physical effort, will be the same as it the night against Kozagi. But he loves to counter punch, but tonight he must go on the attack. Can sometimes be a little cautious and go into his shell, McGee. He cannot afford that in this fight. Reed is a veteran of top level fights now at 33 years of age. There's no one really prepared to commit themselves this early and you have to expect that. McGee hasn't boxed at this level, he hasn't been under this kind of pressure before, so you would imagine Reed wants a quick start, not allow him to find the confidence he's obviously looking for. We've got a good record against Southpaws as well, Robin Reed, and away from home. Remember, he won his world championship in Milan against the Italian Vicenzo Nardiello. Another southpaw. McGee will be wary of Robin Reed's right hands, which gave Joe Calzaghi all kinds of problems when those two met. And that was the toughest fight Calzaghi's ever had. And that's a lowish blow on the inside from McGee. And Reed doubled up in pain from that. 
winced and screamed out, and a point off, a point off for McGee, straight away. Do you know what I mean? I'm looking forward to seeing that again in replay. I wonder if that was as low. I do not think that was low. I think uh, I think McGee caught Reed when he was relaxed, ready to step out of the clinch. I think that was a legal punch. It was. And that is a diabolical liberty if the referee's taken a point already. I think that was play acting from Robin Reed. I'm looking forward to see that in replay. And what does it tell you about Reed's state of mind that he should choose to do that? It was a perfectly legitimate body punch. You saw that straight away on that replay. So this is interesting. Reed has already looked to the referee a couple of times already when he wants him to break them up. It was as though he's trying to instruct the referee. Again, that's experience, but it does. There he's at the referee again. He's, he's complaining all the time. What is going on here with Robin Reed? Does he want the job done for him? Yeah, he keeps shooting glances at referee Thomas Kimmons from Florida in the USA. Not the attitude you would expect from Robin Reed. He's been in the wrong side of a couple of close decisions. I thought he would be breathing, breathing fire tonight, looking to take charge. But we're seeing quite the opposite in the first round. Well, he sometimes struggled in the past with guys who boxed him from the outside. Remember Gianluca Branco, and again he's claiming a low blow on the inside. What is Reed doing in there? Well, what is he doing? Didn't like what I was seeing from him in the first round. I hope we can get a look at that punch. I thought he relaxed his muscles to step out of the break. The referee didn't right, cause it. Yourself, it looked like a legal punch to me. This is the contentious incident. This is the one he had a point deducted for. That was bang on target. Reed relaxed his stomach muscles, claiming a low blow that is a downright liberty. We have to score the round to Reed. But for me, there was nothing wrong with that. Totally legitimate shot. I mean, that's downright cheating from Robin Reed. We don't like it. That's about the fifth time in the first round he's looked at the referee for some help. What does he want here? A man of his experience. There he goes again. Let's be fair, I've never seen anything like this at any stage in his career from him before. I mean, the big question for me was, can he summon it up once again? It's a long time since he's had to do it. And that is the doubts. That's why I've leaned slightly towards Ryan McGee. But uh, that round has to go to Robin Reed 10-9. Here's round two. I scored it even the round because I thought McGee won it, then had a point deducted. Well, that's how I've arrived at 10 9 Ian. The referee's instructing us to give that round to Robin Reed. Black trunks of Brian McGee. The white of Robin Reed. When is he going to start fighting here, Reed? Because all he's done so far is look at McGee and gets him with a good right hand on the inside there, McGee. If I was McGee, I'd be drawing encouragement, I think, Jim, from the way the Reed has started this, because what does it say about his mental approach to this fight? Yeah, well, he certainly didn't put his heart into the first round. He wants to counter, he's trying to draw the lead. His, his tactics are right. He's trying to counter, he enjoys counter-punching, he's not too comfortable committing himself. And against the southpaw stance, it's sometimes a good idea to draw the, the southpaw lead. But his attitude to me has left something lacking. Let's see what develops next. McGee not really establishing his right lead, which would be a key, I think, for him here in this fight. I tell you, Ian, McGee does not want to throw a single... That's a good left-hand lead. Yeah, he did. But McGee does not want to throw single leads to, to a known counter-puncher like Robin Reed. If he's going to lead, he has to follow up with the left hand as well. Single punches are very dangerous for Brian McGee here. It's a lovely feint before he landed that. Good left hand a few seconds ago from McGee. And his speed is troubling Reed, who's quite slow handed for all his other qualities. Many Again, times, he's shooting glances out of the ring. How many ring. times is he going to look to the referee, Robin Reed? A throw of 11 years, wait, what wait, is wait. in his head at the moment? It's the biggest fight in this city since Chris Eubank beat Ray Close in their return fight in 1994. I'd say it's back page news on all the uh, newspapers here who report the boxing so well. Again, he's pulling a face. Every time his punches don't land, he's pulling a face. That was inside of the glove. Well, is Reed going to give one of those curious performances? as he did against Sugar Boy Malinga when he lost his WBC title, and as he did against Franco on the Mike Tyson bill in Glasgow. 
a few years back when he just didn't turn up that night really so far it's McGee who looks the more positive and purposeful in this fight and he's coped with the pressure in excellent fashion he's standing his ground he's a little bit aware of committing himself but you can't blame him but when he sets to work he's putting his, his heart into it which at the moment Robin Reed hasn't done Kidney punches Robin Reed banging round the back there and the crowd like that because they felt that the ref was on McGee's case. See the left hand, you follow that left hand through every camp. This was straight on my cup. Very good. See him, Takis? Keep taking. Benny King on the far side, the cut man, Harry Hawkins is the main trainer with John Rooney helping out, they're happy with him, they're happy with it in that corner. So they should be because he hasn't done anything silly, he hasn't made any mistakes, he's controlled, he's not fully committing himself but when he goes to work he's throwing punches with both hands, that was a beautiful left hand lead. Reed's timing is a mile off of his counters, and if his counter punching's not working, he's in serious trouble. This is round three. Cagey start, to put it mildly, from Robin Reed, who hasn't really done anything much at all as yet. McGee already ranked number seven by the WBC and WBA gets him in good combinations there. Again, McGee just that little bit sharper than Reed. Reed not comfortable leading off, but he's having to do it because he's coming off second best in the second round when his counters were this time. Left hand straight through the middle again. Well disguised that shot too. Just a hint of a feint beforehand and the speed of the punch did the rest. No head movement from Robin Reed. The question with him is, were his best days in the late 1990s? Has he still got it as a top level operator? See, last time out against Zodka, everybody thinks he won the fight, but he didn't really go for it. When he knew it was against him points wise, he didn't really go for it, so does he still have the heart for this business? McGee is doing it right so far, but he has had that point deducted for the alleged low blow, the low blow that wasn't, which we proved conclusively on the video replay. It's that nice little feint from McGee when you're trying to draw someone there, another complaint. About the head this time. But yet again, Robin Reed looking to the referee. And this is a knowledgeable fight crowd in Belfast. They know what they're looking at and they sense the plot a bit here. These are distress signals, I think, from Robin Reed. McGee has found the punch, he's found the tactics, it's a straight left hand, straight through the gap, which is the same tactics we used against Kozagi all those years ago and they've been worked against him here. Officially, McGee defending his IBO title here, but that's a fringe issue. What's really at stake is his ability and desire to gatecrash the real world scene, and he'll do it with a win over Robin Reed. Make no mistake about that. And if he carries on like this, he will do it, but will there be a twist? See, last time out against Otka, Reed was facing a man at the end of his career who wanted to do things slow and cagey. This is a fired up young fighter, the biggest fight of his life, and that's the way he's treating it. There's another alleged head clash. Reed nods this time at McGee, but again he felt that he came off worse in the head clash, but he's making a mountain out of every molehill in there at the moment. And he can't get that right hand going. In fact, he can't get anything going, not yet. Yep, he's timing still way off, and he's been caught repeatedly. Excellent start from Brian McGee. Who had a long and distinguished amateur career, and those skills are being brought to good use here. He's thought about this, they thought they had the beating of Reedus. Looks wild and is missed and is counted with a right hand, McGee's round. Yeah. Stop swinging them punches, all them come straight. Yeah. What's that, 2-1? Yeah, one yeah. My eyes are right. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right, everything. Relax, relax, relax. Calm down. You know, I can't problem. He's 
What you've got to do, you stay off the gym, it's just do what you do at the gym. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, Bob Dylan is also playing in this city tonight, but he'll struggle to match the atmosphere here, where McGee has landed 21 to 8 in terms of headshots. And as for Reed, well, I think the answers are blowing in the wind, aren't they, Jim? Yeah, and at the end of the round, he's asked his corner, is that two rounds to one? I think they're equally to blame. OK, Reed is coming off worse with these clashes, but he should have the experience to get his chin down the way Brian McGee is doing. But Reed is asking the score already as though he's going to measure this one out instead of going all out in every round. Fourth round, again, double jab, left hand from McGee. And at the moment, Robin Reed has a kind of bemused look about him in there as if he just can't get any punches off. It's the way he's complaining about everything. Did nobody tell him this is a rough business? He complains about everything. I think he knows that by now, Jim. Maybe he just feels he's coming to a bear pit here and everything's going to be against him and he needs to nick whatever he can, whatever way he can. And again, he claims a head of clash of heads and shouts something across the ring at McGee who says, what are you moaning about? But he should have his chin in the same position Brian McGee's chin is in. And he would be taken in the forehead. And most of these clashes have been in the forehead. So it's been 50-50. McGee has never complained about anything here. This is curious, to put it mildly, from Robin Reed, a fighter with such a good and long record in this business. Why doesn't he just settle down to the business of going about trying to win this fight again? He can't cope with the speed of that left hand, no disguised answer. as well from McGee. Yeah, no answer whatsoever for the straight left. I think the referee now has cottoned on a little bit to what Robin Reed's doing in there. I mean, they're both moving forward, heads are coming together, but Reed should have his chin down. He's the man with 11 years experience. See, I think the, the business of ambition and youth and freshness come into this a little bit. Reed's had his glory nights, they were behind him. Can he quite summon up that ambition anymore? There's a bit of blood around on his left cheek from somewhere. See, the big question for me has always been, can Reed summon up the desire once again. I was always disappointed when Robin headed down the WBF route. I mean, that's a nonsense title. He's far too good for that. But had his ambitions dropped, and maybe he can't raise them up again. Felt he was robbed last time out in Germany against Sven Ocker. Not everybody agreed with him. And certainly the referee that night was awful, frankly. As Reid said, at least Dick Turpin had the decency to wear a mask. Yeah, but Robin Reid was told halfway through that fight that he was well behind in points. Oh, and then Ray does get in with a shot, and down goes McGee. Touchdown, it was a left hand from Reid, and he's going to get a count here for that. So there, out of nowhere, is a breakthrough for Reid. McGee, it's only a flash knockdown, but that's going to count on the cards. They both landed at the same time there, but Reid's was the punch that did the business. Just a touchdown, but a knockdown nonetheless, and Reid punches the air as he goes back to the corner. Here is the knockdown again, Jim. I think they both landed simultaneously here. We'll have a look now. I'm not telling you what to do Yeah, just... McGee come through with a left hand, but did nothing the same power as Reid. But I thought he was winning the round up to that point, so I've scored at 10-9 in Reid's favour. The knockdown has turned it around for Robin Reid. And then there was a head clash again earlier in the round, which Reid made a song and dance about. You see, Reid is the one coming forward there, but he's not comfortable because he's his head's up in the air. Yeah, I suppose you couldn't blame him for complaining about that one, but with his experience, his chin should have been lower when he's coming forward. A marvellous match to fight guru, Brian Hughes, sometime author as well. In the corner with Robin Reid, who stayed loyal to him all the way through. Well, we'll see if the knockdown has dented any of McGee's confidence. He looks OK at the moment, he's still prepared to stand his ground, but time will tell. And that's a nasty little setback, and will it 
now convince Reid to get on with the business in a more authentic fashion. We're in round five. It's messy at times. But there's a drama going on in that ring and there's an awful lot at stake. Reid, I suggest, fighting for his very career to maintain himself in the top echelon of super middleweights. McGee looking to get into that league. See, Reid is able to make McGee miss at times, but his timing's not there for the counters. Now, that clash of heads was certainly Reid's fault, oh, and he's come off worse, but yeah. that was Reid's fault. Looks at his corner, and he's got a cut on the forehead now, Robin Reid. He's angry, Reid, he's shouting at his corner men about it. They'll look forward to seeing that clash again, but I would say it's one that Reid could not really complain about. He looked to me to be the one coming forward. Maybe the replay will tell us different. Well, this is developing into a contentious and controversial night and fight here at the King's Hall. <laughs> He says that he's sinned against in there. Reid, does he have a case? Well, he's been complaining from the first round, so maybe it's a case of the boy who called Wolf. Maybe the referees maybe run out of patience a lot, but it seems to have fired Reid up. But they're uh, shouting, but not committing himself. Just listen to this Belfast crowd now, screeching their support for their latest hero, Brian McGee. He has to be careful here that he doesn't go tentative and cautious. We've seen that from him in the past. Good left hand from him. A left hand again and down, again goes McGee. He caught him around the top of the head, he said he slipped. He says he slipped but the referee doesn't agree and it's a count for the second round running. There is uproar in this arena. Well, the punch landed in, I think the referee had no choice. Maybe he did have trouble with his footing, but it was the, the punch that put him over. And Reid is clawing his way back into this. That's a good left hand from McGee. He has been on the floor a couple of times against Jerry Ella and Chris Nembard as well. There was that little question, not so much about his punch resistance, but the way that he can be put down. And that cut is worse now around the forehead of Reed, it's bleeding more heavily, some of it's running into the eye and obscuring the vision, all kinds of stuff going on in there at the moment. I'll tell you what, you need four referees for this. See, they both have power, they're both very respectful of each other's power, so both very cagey to, to commit themselves. The fight hasn't flowed, there's loads of drama. Everyone's on the edge of their seat, but there's been no flow of action as yet. Not so much success either for McGee in the last couple of rounds. He hasn't really got off with those combinations and that nice straight left hand that he's been managing again. There was he was a bit free with the use of the head that time, I thought, McGee. It is chaos, isn't it, in here? to blame there, I don't see that you can complain. But Robin Reid again is asking what round it is, the fifth round of a championship fight, and a fighter is asking what round is it, what's going on in his head? Close your eyes, Robin, close your eyes. So look at the knockdown here. In all the confusion he kind of forgot, as Clint Eastwood once said. See, the punch landed there, OK, he may have had trouble with his footing, but there was a definite punch landed on the side of the head, but there Reid again reacting looking for the referee's sympathy through the punch, and the punch caused the knockdown, so it's, it's right yeah. to, to call it as a knockdown. The only thing I'd say, the punch looked like a slap to me, but there, you know, that's another argument, isn't it? Looked like an inside of the glove slap, but that, that goes down on the cards, and these, the judges might be scoring these 10-8, these rounds, they might well be. Well, the previous knockdown round, I thought he lost the round, I scored at 10-9, but I gave him that one 10-8 because nobody really had the upper hand. I agree with you, Jim, I'm just saying the judges might, yes. not, might not have done. Here's the sixth. Black trucks, remember, of Brian McGee. 
product of the Holy Trinity Club in Belfast. Again, Reid complains to the referee about McGee's head. There's loads of drama in this fight, but unfortunately, we've got an unfortunate clash of styles. There is no flow whatsoever. The cut, by the way, has been ruled an accidental clash of heads. In other words, if it meant that the fight had to be stopped, they would go to the scorecards because we've had over four completed rounds now. But with a couple of the knockdowns in the bank for Robin Reed, he can't be in a bad position here. But Reed. McGee has to be busier. It's obvious that uh, Reed does not want to commit himself. So McGee has to be the one to do that. He's been on the floor twice, so he'll be looking to improve on what he's doing at the moment. He's gone sleepy, I think, here, McGee. He's gone tentative since his visits to the canvas. Seen this before with him, he just goes a little bit gun-shy and starts drifting through the fight, and he cannot afford to do this here. I mean, Reed has been complaining all night long. He's short of making a call to the Samaritans or something. You know, could he have done any more by way of protests yeah every time there's a clinch they get together he's looking to the referee as though what's, what's going on here give me a little bit of help but McGee really has to get some boxing together here he has to start using his jab get two and three punches off he's trying single shots and against that a noted and a perfectionist of a counter puncher it's never going to work it's a messy, rough fight and in many ways, an unsatisfactory one, but dramatic, yes it is, because there's lots happening in the fight. Now then, success from McGee, and every punch he lands is cheered by 5,000 voices packed into this arena. But he has gone lazy, hasn't he? With two knockdowns and a point deducted, he's up against it here, he has to produce better. I think his confidence has taken a little bit of a dent, he's still going forward, but uh, not the same confident look that we saw in the first couple of rounds. But this is what it takes to win fights at this level, he has to come through this, has to find the belief, that's what it's about. But the left hand has been working every time he uses it, why has he, has he pulled back on it? Why not go left hand leads, chin down, right hand up, and fire that left hand straight through the middle? It's an unhappy mix of styles. Nothing at all in Reed's jab, nothing. Eight on one, sir, yeah? Young Welsh cruiserweight Enzo Macronelli hopes to show us all just why he's considered so exciting. He returns to action next weekend on Saturday Fight Night. It's eight next Saturday, back on Sky Sports 1. We're a long, long way from sorting this one out here in Belfast, though. You can say that again. We're at the halfway point. I've got Reed a point up with the, with the knockdowns confusing things and the, the point off for the alleged low blow in the first round. I'm not sure he deserves to be a point up, but I think he maybe he is. Well, two knockdowns and a point deduction, that turns the whole fight around. So McGee is the one who has to improve on what he's doing. Has to put punches together, commit myself a little bit more. Looks so good for McGee early on, I thought, here. He looked to be the boss in there. He was boxing really quite nicely. But the left hand straight through the middle was working so well. Why has he abandoned it? Reed worried about something with his right hand there. He sort of looked down at the bandage, it may be coming loose after he'd thrown the right. See, Reed is flicking out the left hand. They're not jabs, that they're sort of don't hit me punches, they're just stopping McGee from doing anything. Good experience if you're going to follow up with something, but so far he's not really following up. He's just flicking forward. There's the left hand working again for McGee. He's got to get that punch right back into this fight. The speed with that punch looks as if it might be decisive early on. See, these are not jabs from Robin Reed. He, he's looking to drop the right hand in. 
left, it can't tell me. There's that straight left again. McGee started using it again, and it's still working. Yes, he's worked that well. McGee, who claims he's had inspiration by reading the autobiography of Lance Armstrong, the great Tour de France cyclist who overcame cancer, of course. That's better by McGee. He needs to just get those gloves flying again. See, he's the one who has the timing. His boxing is a little bit better than Reed's tonight, but you have to throw two and three punches at a time. Single punches against a counter puncher, you're wasting your time. All the time, Robin Reed is talking to the referee, who must be wondering what he's done to deserve this appointment. Again, Reed makes McGee miss, but cannot punish him for it. His timing is not there. Counter punching not working for Robin Reed. It's a messy kind of fight, but the victory has to be earned still, and it's very much up for grabs as we go into the second half of this fight. Straight left again, finding the target. This is a bit better in this round from McGee. Again, the referee is checking for the damage on the head of Reed. He's not done much at all in this round. McGee has the speed. He started using it again. I think his confidence was obviously dented with a couple of knockdowns. He seems to be finding it again. Good left hook from Reed. Yeah, gets through with one there. I think Reed felt that he might be able to take Brian McGee out into the deep, deep ocean and drown him tonight. So it hasn't turned out like that, not yet anyway, not at all. Welcome back to Belfast, a tough fight to score, this one, not many punches that clean, McGee 36% success rate, look at Reed, only 17% landed. Yeah, but the knockdowns Ian, and the point deduction, but I've never heard a fighter so often asking his corner, what round is this? Does he want to be here, does he want to pick up this IBO title, or is it just a night's work and he wants to get it over with? Where is the attitude we've seen in the past from Robin Reed? Round eight, was that stat right on the computer? Reed has landed only 17 punches in seven rounds. Goodness me. Well, most of the jabs, Ian, you can't even call them jabs. He's just flicking out, trying to stop McGee from getting set. Here we go again, he's aiming for the glove. He's not trying to land with that jab, hoping he gets an opening for the right hand. I mean, it's so predictable, it's so easy to, to see what's coming next. Brian McGee's having no problem with it. Not once has he put McGee under pressure and sustained it. It's vital for both men, though, that even in this untidy fight, they do get the W against their name because it could project them to riches in this division, which is looking out for new stars just at the moment. Although Joe Calzaghe can't get his light heavyweight career going, can he, at the moment? Still technically holds the WBO title at this weight. Reed's still the one with that frustrated look on his face. Things aren't working. He's not too happy about it, but he's still well in this fight because of the, the refereeing and uh, the couple of knockdowns. It isn't the thriller in Manila, but it's absorbing enough in its own way. He has landed the cleaner punches, hasn't he, McGee? Yeah, I mean, I would have him comfortably in front, apart from the... Oh, oh that's a beautiful right shot. hand! Roundhouse right! Since he scrambled, big problems for McGee, can he survive this? He'll need all his conditioning. He got up at about six. Mandatory eight. Gets a bit more time from the referee. Vital time. Oh, referee's doing him a big favour here. Big favour he got from the referee there. Brian McGee has never been hit like that in his life. That has taken everything out of him. And his legs have gone. We still have a full minute to go here. That's not a knockdown, but that was his legs gone. Oh, he's, count he's counted that as a punch. There was a left hand in there, maybe. Oh, he's 
this is trouble now for McGee. And you have to question his punch resistance a bit here now. And he might struggle to get through this round. Reed could take him out. Left hook. Ian, his balance is gone, so there'll be nothing in his punches. So Reed can do exactly as he pleased. Throw caution to the wind and pour the punches. It's a survival job for 29 seconds for Brian McGee. There's some of the crowd trying to get him through. This last, what is it, 20 seconds or so of the round. It'll seem like about 20 years. This time, not a knockdown, says the referee. McGee can buy a bit of time with that. Look at that clock counting down, top left of your picture. These are vital seconds now in the career of McGee. Why is Robin Reed not giving it everything he has here? The fight is there for the winning, but once again, he's too slow to pour everything out. But what a massive round for Robin McGee. That might... oh, sorry, Robin Reed. <laughs> you excuse the confusion, Jim, and all the chaos going on here. Lie. But uh, that was the big round. That might have been the round in the fight that decides it. Two knockdowns, 10 7 round that for Robin Reed. Well, any doubts we had in the past about Brian McGee's chin, forget it, Ian. That punch would have knocked out most super middleweights in the world. That was bang on the button. It was a full blooded shot right on the point of the chin. And to recover from that, to find yourself on canvas once again. Nothing wrong with this fellow's chin. He was badly stunned for the rest of the round. Can he recover in the corner here? Robin Reed poured the punches forward for about 20 seconds, then went back to sleep. Not sure there was a second punch that landed, but he tumbled on the ground and it was counted as a knockdown. Well, they weren't clean punches, Ian, but they were punches, so I think it's fair to call it a knockdown. I, was a, a I don't think job. anything landed, Jim. Frank, sorry, I don't well, think anything landed. Well, in a couple of clumps and landed on the top of the head just before that, I would have scored that a knockdown. Well, it was by the referee anyway. Here's round nine. He certainly threw a lot of leather. White trunks of Robin Reed. He's come back from an awful start in the fight and looks the man on top now. What can McGee do about this? Or was he just not quite ready for this kind of test? Robin Reed had been looking for that right hand for about the three previous rounds. He was just talking with the jab, just waiting for a chance for that big right hand to land and look at the result when it did. He's looking for another one now as well. And this is going to make McGee maybe go into his shell even more at a time when he needs to try and claw back what is now, uh, well, probably three point deficit at least on the cards. Still that blood dripping in gory fashion from the forehead of Reed. Well, if Brian McGee had nothing to lose in the previous round, then that's been magnified in a massive 10-7 round to Robin Reed last time up. Counter shot with the right hand was a good one from McGee that time. As Reed looked to give him the charge to land with another big haymaker. I wonder, with Robin's recent mentality, if he'll go back into a shell now, thinking he's in a couple of big rounds, the job's done, or will he go for broke and put a clincher on this performance? Well, I don't know, fighting away from home in Belfast, he might feel he doesn't want to leave it to the judges, and after everything that's happened, I mean, his fighting instinct should tell him to look for a finish, shouldn't it? But in a couple of uh, Robin's losses, you feel that he could have and should have boxed better. Just doesn't always squeeze every ounce out of his body. Just tries to do enough to win. Maybe he feels he's well in front with the knockdowns here. So maybe will it be a costing job or will he make, it sh make sure? Right on the inside from McGee, but he needs to do much more than he's doing at the moment. Looks very cautious. Tentative, thoughtful, pensive about it all. Right! But the lead's not really doing anything this round, Ian. So that the few punches that have landed have come from, from McGee. Yeah. His confidence must have been shattered for the previous round. Yeah, he's been on the canvas four times. Left hand catches right. him as he looks for refuge along the ropes. See, I think one of the big differences is when Reed lands cleanly, there's an effect. When McGee lands cleanly, there's no effect. 
gives you a break there. How do you feel? A bit more there. How do you feel? That's it. You hit that round. He's doing nothing else. He's doing that left hand in, right? But you've got to move to your right. He's trying to set you up with right hand. You move to your right, and you clearly see the left hand. Once you move to the right, you get your left hand. Back it up with the right hook. Now that else, you don't need to do any combinations, right? Come the Does left he hand in. Bring now, your right hook think, in. Move to your right. Yeah, yeah, well, he has to do it. You're moving out there. I mean, it's amazing that the amount of knockdowns going against him. He's been doing the job well. He's been boxing well. It's, it's been a scrappy encounter. But the power of Robin Reed, four times now, scoring knockdowns, a point the deduction in the first round. Everything that could happen to Brian McGee has happened, and the fact that he's still in there shows the character. Give it to him, Robbie. Robbie, please, come on now. Come on. He's corner, no, he has to put more into this. The, the IBO title is there for him if he wants it. And it would be a massive win. His biggest since his world title days, I'd say, for Robin Reed if he could get this away from home. He what many saw as a 50-50 fight. And would add to the Robin Reed legend of good performances away from home. I wonder how many times in history a, a fighter has scored four knockdowns in a fight and still lost. You have to say the odds are heavily stacked against Brian McGee. <laughs> McGee all the time looking for that left hand. How much real self-belief is left? After four trips to the canvas. Well, the problems McGee has encountered is when he's been moving back. So he wants to get that chin down and come forward. Every time he's been into trouble, he's been on the ropes or he's been pushed back. So he wants that chin down, the right hand up, and let that left hand go, which has worked. The corner have told McGee, don't throw any combinations, Jim. He did there, though, and it worked. Little bit of play acting from Reed, who's never been down amateur or pro, he claims, in his whole career. He's got a great chin, and that's been one of the differences here a little bit. I'm not suggesting he's he's got a bad chin, Mickey. He's got up from those knockdowns, and one of them was a ferocious one, but he has been down from punches. And it's been costly on the cards. Yep, that's what's kept this fight so close. Good left hand. Still, Robin Reed still not doing enough work. I just don't think Reed is comfortable coming forward. Master counter puncher, but his timing's been off tonight. So this has turned into a scrappy affair at times, but loads of drama. Yeah. Well, they're both naturally counter punchers, these two, which is probably spoilt the spectacle a little but so much incident so many talking points i mean you see reed flicking again with the left hand that is the time when mcgee said chin down and fire that left hand as he's flicking with the jab counter that reed has stopped complaining now and got on with the fight but his work rate is low it must be said Suspicion that in the rounds where there are no knockdowns, McGee's just a little bit cleaner and doing a little bit more. Slashing left hand to end the round from Reed, who punches the air again as if to try to convince the judges he won it. I didn't think he did. Okay. Right, Rob. Just hold it out back. Let's give a little uh, sneak preview of the scorecards. Yeah, I would love that. Come on, you don't have to do it now because you're going to give it to him, I'm telling you. It's his big rounds, but. It's Brian very, Hughes very knows he has to put more into this. Rob, you've yeah. got to fire these shots and fire them straight. You're going for his head, aim for his chest, you lift his chin. Right. He's dropping his head down with the arm, Both arms. Well, they're a bit anxious in that reed corner. Yeah, I feel, I mean, I heard where Brian Hughes say there, you, you're, you're going to give it to him if you're not careful. I don't know he's not working enough. I mean, it's really the knockdowns that have kept him in this fight. Back in for a shoulder, watch your arm reach, and get out of here. Be first with three, boom, 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 body to head. Move the right.
My card says read by one point now. That's Curiously nice. enough, I mean, he's, he's had four knockdowns and a point effectively for him because of the, the low blow, alleged low blow, the low blow that wasn't in round one. That, as Jim's he's, card. He's been so lazy in between times, you can see a habit the same. I've given the last two rounds to Brian McGee, and does that show Wait. some strength of character or what? Or is it something lacking in Robin Reed when he should really have been going for broke? Rocky, if they do score this for McGee, <laughs> what's Reed going to say after what happened to him with Opera in Germany? That'll, that'll seem like a tea party, wouldn't it, by comparison? Yes, and with the left hand there, as they worked in close. Reed, it's suddenly sweat spraying as well from McGee's head. They hold on. Well, he's holding, says McGee. It's his turn to complain. I think we may referee. see a couple of big rounds from, from Robin Reed. He's been asking what round it is since the fifth round. I think he's worried about fighting all out at this stage of his career. But surely whatever he's got left in the tank, he must throw it at Brian McGee in the last two rounds. Right on the inside from Reed on the counter that time. Neither of them have really got their jab working. Both have been very concerned about being counted all the time. Good right hand on the counter as Reed closed in that time from Brian McGee. It's the left hand again coming straight through from McGee. So difficult to score some of the rounds, but McGee most of the time just a little bit busier. So cross generation fight this one with uh, the classic ingredients really, the proven veteran warrior, nearly veteran anyway now, Robin Reed, and the younger man looking to make his real mark in the business, and it's still, well we think anyway, closest on the cards, arguably. Well nobody really gained the upper hand in this round Reed. yet again. Reed is the only man who has dominated at any time in the fight, obviously with four knockdowns you're going to be dominating, that's the big problem. For Brian McGee, he has never really dominated. He's nicked a load of the rounds and Mark Hart has been a little bit busier. But he has never at any time dominated this. Left hook, Reid, good shot. So much of this infighting and untidy holding. It's been a horrible fight in many ways and yet you can't take your eyes off it. Well, I think they're both really feeling the, the pace now. It's not been fast, smooth boxing, but it's been very physical. They've been pulling each other, wrestling all over the place. So, obviously, both beginning to feel a little bit exhausted here. But oh. this has been a scrappy round. That's a good shot, though, by McGee. Left through the middle. Well, scrappy round, but once again, the couple of clean punches did seem to come from McGee. You, you just need from, you need a big round now. Left hand, and a load of left hand, and a load of left hand, he can't get the red hook on. McGee has landed, what is it, 19 or 21 more punches, uh, according to the computer, through the fight. But um, the computer's seeing more than we are, I think, there. It's so hard to pick them, to pick it. This is a hard fight to score. Yeah, but also the knockdowns and the point deduction of swung away on his favour. Reed's had eight 12 rounders completed. McGee's done it four times already, so they're well used to the distance, these two. Here's Jim's scorecard. Yeah, I've squared it up now, just in that last round. McGee, uh, Reed again, doing very little work. The couple of clean punches, it was a scrappy round, a poor round. I would not argue if you want to give it the other way. But I've got them all square now. I scored that last one even. I really couldn't separate them that time. And here's the last round. For what it's worth, I've got Reed ahead by one going into the last. So what happens now? They, it might well depend on this. It could do, it's possible. Reed is the one with the granite chin, so he is the one who can afford to take some chances, but will he do it? Is it just not in his makeup anymore? He knows he can take a shot better than anybody I've ever seen. Real solid chin. Come out himself here. Except maybe Wayne McCullum. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. I'll, I'll give you that, Ian. Another Irishman, of course. From these parts. What have you made of McGee's performance? Well, he 
he's, he's ca character, he showed tremendous character coming off the floor four times. This was always going to be a difficult match. Reed is a nightmare to box when he won't commit himself. He's a master counter puncher. So I think Brian McGee has moved into the, the top league tonight, although we have to say it's been a scrappy contest. Could we have the draw, I wonder? Nearly another. Big head clash, they just about well, avoided think, it that time. I think McGee would settle for a draw, Ian. And then let the debate begin in the trade newspapers and elsewhere. Who can get the better of this last round? Body shot on the inside from Reed that time. That cut has never got any worse on his forehead. Any clean shots away at all. There's been no kind of classic at all. Now, Reeks, that's a good left hand. That's, that's a good left hand. Well picked. I mean, by Reeks McGee. timing in has never been right. His and counter, again, by his McGee. have always been off. He again is the one taking the shots. They're worried in the Reed corner. I think they're thinking in Belfast, the judges will give a close fight to Brian McGee. Let's see if that proves to be the case. Well, with four knockdowns and a point deduction, if he does lose this, although he could be on his way to losing it in my car, just really through laziness and his timing being so far off. Dave Wilde with the right hand. His timing certainly wasn't up in round eight with that cracker. I'll tell you what, McGee has shown a lot of grit to come back from what happened to him in that round when he was on the floor twice, and one of them was a big, big knockdown. Well, the only clean punch he's landed in the 12th round here come from McGee. Reed again has produced very little, he's posing, not getting his shots off. So, a scrappy, another close round, but again, I have to give it to McGee because he is the only one who's landed anything like a clean punch. Doesn't finish yet though, Jim, and here's McGee, this is a strong finish. Reed says, oh, I'm not hurt by it. Play acts a little bit, plays possum, but that's McGee's last round. McGee definitely, I think quite beyond the speed, won the last round. You couldn't really be that certain about an awful lot of the other ones, except where there were the knockdowns. And everybody here in the arena is wondering just how that is going to be scored by our judges. Richie Davis sitting right by us. Robin Dolpierre of France and another British referee, Paul Thomas. They're trying to sort this out for us. So what a curious story it would be if with four knockdowns, being on the floor four times, this man, Brian McGee, scores the biggest win of his career. Yeah, well, if that I happened, I'm just I mean. turning it around in the last third of the fight, but uh, you feel a man who scored four knockdowns certainly doesn't deserve to lose. But Robin Reed, for so many rounds, he was far too lazy, his timing was off. It was not the performance that, that we expected from him. He did not commit himself enough, he complained to the referee in the early rounds. There we have it, I just have it, McGee winning. He landed about four or five clean punches in the last round, and that was all that happened in the last round, so I have to give him the round. But I, I, uh, I, I, I will I, settle for whatever the judges come up with. Yeah, you could not argue about this one. You, you couldn't, and I, I've got it 1-13, 1-13, a draw. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we got that, you know. It was only 14-1, to 1, wasn't it, with the bookmakers, a very narrow price. Reed nods to us, he did settle down after his, frankly, ridiculous start to the fight where he was complaining at every single thing that was happening you wonder what on earth he was doing the first yeah, three rounds I'm also amazed at how many times he asked the corner what round is it what round is it that should be the last thing in your mind we're ready I think for the decision Jim here it comes and there's some tension in this arena about this how's this gone how have they sorted it out John McDonough will tell us ladies and gentlemen after 12 rounds of world championship boxing the three judges' scorecard reads. Judge Paul Thomas has scored this contest 115-111. Judge Richie Davis has scored the contest 113-112. And Judge Robin Dolpierre has scored the contest 114-111. All three judges are in favour of. And a new... Reed's got it! Super middleweight champion of the world from Rancorn is... Reed wins a 
messy fight and there. And as we say, you can't so argue. That's a big, big oh, win for him. Right a first now. ever defeat McGee. for Brian McGee. And I suppose in a tight fight, a guy who had the other bloke on the floor four yeah, times. You cannot argue. He's the yeah. winner, isn't he? Yeah. No, scoring four knockdowns in a fight, you do not deserve to lose. But uh, I would not, not one of Robin Reed's better performances. It was a scrappy fight. But as I said, I would never argue because so many of the rounds were so scrappy and so close. Paul Thomas had it by four, Robin Dolpierre by three, and Richie Davis by one. I scored it level, Jim had it to McGee by one. Might there be a rematch? This is a man who's served his time and taken plenty of knocks out of the ring as much as in it. And that was even before starting tonight. This is Reed's night here in Belfast. Lots more action to come, including another big fight on this bill at the King's Hall. The Commonwealth light middleweight title, defended by Jamie Moore tonight against Ozzy Duran, and the former triple champion from Belfast at flyweight, Damian Kelly, in action against Delroy Spencer. All that still to come. But Robin Reed savors this moment as Brian McGee goes back to his dressing room without his title belt and with his big ambitions torn up in front of this partisan Belfast crowd tonight. I say partisan, but they've given Robin Reid a pretty fair reception despite that. The smile tells you everything you need to know. It is Robin Reid's night. He and his family have been on the other end so often, haven't they? <laughs> he persevered. Let's hear how he enjoys being a winner. Kisses from everyone. It was the uh, comeback win you craved. Do you believe you fully deserve that? Totally deserve it. That's why I'm so emotional. I've had so many things go wrong with uh, decisions go wrong with, against me before. With the Ocker fight, the Kawasaki fight was close. I've worked really hard for this fight, and you know the cut, the cut came in the fifth round, whatever it was. And I thought, oh, great, just my luck, you know. But I've done it. I boxed, I boxed out my skin. It's a bit dirty, but the end kept coming in, and I just stuck to kept my composure. He couldn't take the power in the end, and that's what that's what I did him. Such a difficult clash of styles, such a difficult fight to <laughs> score. Early on, were there distress signals from you? Because it looked like it. Early on, it was because he was he was coming in with the air. I mean, the experience. That's what got me through that. I didn't expect, I've seen him box before, he's a lot cleaner fighter, he, I thought you're letting yourself down, and you know, I thought to myself, he's letting himself down in a world title fight as a world champion, I thought why are you doing these things, you know what I mean, it's, but, you know, that's boxing, his head, you know, he's coming in with his head, I thought he was a lot cleaner fighter, but he wasn't, but we'll do. He had a point taken off him, then you made four knockdowns during the fight, you never seemed to build on that, did you just believe that would be enough? No, no, not that, but I knew I was in control of the fight, and... The way he was dangerous with his head, I thought, don't take unnecessary risks because I could feel the blood pouring down the head. And the referee, I did, you know, utmost respect for him, utmost respect for the referee, he took control of the fight. He was dirty with his head, though, kept coming in with the head. And I just thought, I just don't need a, another cut anywhere else. I just thought, stay composed, stay controlled, don't take any unnecessary risks. I thought he's going to walk onto one, and he did, and he kept doing it, and I dropped him four times. Do you believe McGee's a world-class fighter and maybe deserves a rematch? Yeah, I'll, I'll fight anybody, Major. You know me. <laughs> I'll fight anyone, but, you know, I'm, I'm, going, I'm looking for bigger and better things. If the money's right and everything else, we'll do it again. We'll do it in Manchester next time, shall we? But, uh, you know, I want bigger and better things. Utmost respect for Brian McGee. You know, he's a tough customer. Give him his due. He got off the floor four times he got off the floor and he came back and forth but I knew the power was like taking you know I was taking the, the, the fight away from him with the power I just didn't want to get you know because cuts leave scar tissue you know and I'm not worried about my looks and blah 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 <laughs> I'm talking about boxing now do you know what I mean and using the box you got the decision well done Robin Thank you, Steve Collins and Barry McGuigan give us their verdict on Robin Reed's win here in Belfast and still to come Jamie Moore against Ozzy Duran for the Commonwealth light middleweight title Judge can't, um... Check. Ooh. 
You got this, Barry. Yes. Check. Check. 